for these characters that were trying to wake us all up. Because don't forget, uh, uh, I, all, of us, all of us work together to wake each other up. Hey, Alex, we're about to get on to the next segment, but this segment will be a segment as well. So just don't worry, because we can do what we want to do, too. Anyway, <laughs> hang on. And Pat, hold on. Uh, Mike's, James. Uh, tech, kept to talk. Talk, talk, talk. Awesome. What, are you, what are you on, five? Is it on? No, I'm on, I think I'm on six. You're on six. On talk. Six. Talk. Yeah, hello, hello. I don't hear you. <coughs> I will. Turn up the mic. Um, I am, but I don't. Otis okay, Redding was killed by uh, What's up. on five? I think he's on five. Oh, okay, Kurt, you're on five. Talk. Hello, 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 hello. Checking, checking. One, two, three, and check, check. check. Talk, talk. One, two, three, check. Oh, hello, you're hello. Good. Okay, James. Yes, leave them all on. I will do the best I can. Leave them on, leave them on. Uh, and if, if your mouth moves, at least they can say you tried. Well, so. if my mouth moves, well, they can read sign language. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got, I never heard of that before, but you, you can, you can, I mean, you, you can Maybe they can read my lips like George Bush once mentioned. Yeah. Anyway, all right, on your marks. Okay, five twenty. We're gonna start at 520, go from there. Off your mouth, George Bush. Okay. Um, Pat, you there? We're going to kind of do what we're going to do here. Hold yeah, on. I wanted to run something by you before um, we started. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. All right. Um, all right, on your marks. Hello. Uh, what, what, geez. Quit messing with us, bad guys. Anyway, uh, this is All Day Live, and uh, guys, if you know us, if you watch our show enough, you know, you know you kind of bear with us as far as, I, of course, I'm Wilkie Wilson, this is All Day Live, and it, it, it's you kind of have to get used to the fact that the equipment doesn't always work, the microphones wander, cameras even wander, um, and I wonder, but I hope you are too, uh, and we all try to wonder as we wander and everything else around us does too. And, and my microphone's never working, but that's okay. Please donate to the North Seattle Community College's campus SEC TV projects that keep public access alive. If you don't realize that if we lose public access, then only the bad guys have TV. Now, bad guys can creating. be public access too. I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying they can't, they can. But why, you know, they got corporate TV, you know, oink oink, it's all about them. You know, they got to have their sex, drugs, rock and roll, baby blood to drink, and say it's worse than Satan, all that kind of stuff if you haven't got it by now. I don't, but they do. And, and like I said, at least we have public access, community access. That's us. And why I do what I do, I think it's incredible that as long as the miracle that we have public access, and I'm not the guy that put that all together, somebody else did, but it's a miracle that we have it. But we, and how many people are around us that, may understand the reasoning behind why we should keep it. Like the kids over at the UW campus, I told them, you can do your own resume. Just do five shows, it goes out on the Google search engine, and that's your resume. I hope, but they none of them get it. They're too busy texting each other. They're not doing anything, they're not creating anything. I don't think people get it. While you're here, aren't you supposed to be creating and building and architecting and helping your fellow community and helping them to help the community? and all that kind of stuff, kind of like when the, the guys in wooden ships got here and other people came later and they rolled their sleeves up and built houses for each other and helped create roads and towns and all that kind of stuff. When the, them guys back in London and France and those places were thinking, they, they sheep are sheep, they'll never figure it out. Let's keep the wars going. We'll control the population. That's our population because we keep them in debt, that kind of thing. Everything's kind of like not been what it could be in a sense it did, but it wasn't. Some incredible people came here. I think it was our grandparents, great grandparents, and the American Indians that were here too. And a lot of problems happened. You know, a lot of stuff, just, you know, one person and everything else. But we need to come to a formula, a focus as a people now. That's why we're doing these TV shows, I think. And communities of people of us. And in the meantime, while we're being all day live, and I'm not, and they're not Will P. Wilson, you're Curtis Kimball, and it's Alex, Alanda. Stallings and James Lost. James, thank you for also being here. And we are all day live because it's every one of us all day live. And um, Pat Shoup as well, as we got her in the background. And we got Pat calling in from Arkansas. She's the host of Call for Investigation. 
for 12, 14 years. And if we are keeping it going, kind of holding it on a steady path of information, things that what we think of, not what bad guys think of, what's a bad guy? And Alex, you're good at analyzing that. So are you, Curtis, as far as being a targeted individual electronically. James Loss, as far as understanding how they don't do anything for the homeless except make more homeless. And then Pat Shoup, as far as understanding that behind all this is a very well-developed plan with lots of our money they stole to make their plan work, right? Because they take your money, steal it, and then they make sure that you will never make any more money because your money you had before will keep you from making money that they have oh. to keep you from doing that kind of thing. But anyway, you guys, and, and Alex, we're going to hear some more. Thank you on that. And then Pat, real quick, let's get some <laughs> input from Pat Shoup if we can, real quick. And we're going to get on the show here, I we've think. We've got breaking news Good. that uh, we need to verify, you know, to find out further uh, according to this, today, as of 2 p.m., the Federal Reserve was bankrupted, and the Federal Reserve now being uh, swallowed up by the U.S. Treasury under new leadership. As of midnight Eastern Standard Time, the Organic Act of 1871 is repealed. The U.S. Corporation is no more. We need to verify this information. just came in as breaking news. Ah. Uh. It sounds breaking, like uh, yeah, going no, broke breaking, good right? Um, it's not good, Pat. That is, but anyway, uh, it, it's so always... translation uh, for us, Pat. Translation for the people, please. Uh, that means that the what has been used as a corporate, in other words, there's a U.S. corporation and there's an actual national government of the United States of America. Corporate government. The Organic Act of 1871 <coughs> took away the national government and supplanted it with a corporation rather than what uh, it's supposed to be. And as of uh, midnight Eastern Standard Time, according to this news, uh, it is uh, no more. And we actually are back to the United States of America, the Republic of the United States of America. One God under, <clears throat> under God, one nation under God we trust, the real thing. Um, it, it sounds good and warm and fuzzy, and I got Star Spangled Banner going up my backbone, but I don't know what, if that, what happens after that. I might have fireworks coming out my eardrums, but in the meantime... Yeah, that's um, my point. We need to verify it, and we need to be cautious. Okay, new leadership. We need to find out more about this new leadership. What's going on? And, you know, even if this is true, we need to be aware of the next step. Yeah, well, I, uh, meaning, meaning in a sense, Pat, uh, it's like if everything is light and you're just simply trying to create a fashion or whatever it is, and it means but the people, uh, they're all dumbed down and fluoridated, and I call them sheeples anymore. I call them shaples. Because they've already, they're, they're not sheep anymore, they're just shaped. They're shaples. That's another Love term it. for us. I mean, am I wrong? I mean, it's we are shaples. And yeah, the, mean time, the mean thing is, is that, guys, uh, Pat, it's like, mm -hmm. let's look at it from this standpoint. If we got in a wooden boat and just came up on the beach on the East Coast, should we start, try that and see what happens? <laughs> start all over again. Yeah. I well, mean, I what else is there? I mean, maybe that's the, the way to do it. Just kind of just start all over again. I, I, I don't know if you get chopped down trees, you're going to have to go get a warrant, get yourself, I mean, well, a bail to get out of jail, that kind of stuff. But um, in the meantime, how do we reshape it? How, what, your ideas on that? I mean, it's, we got to how this thing. How do we thing, reshape the whole thing? Yeah. Uh, common law, start there. Okay. If you have justice, you can straighten out the rest. That's why they want to avoid the Seventh Amendment but you need to go up to your local, you know, governor, the heads of state, whomever, and, you know, get them to state publicly, do you support the Seventh Amendment? In other words, common law court. Well, if you do, then get with it. And if they say they don't, well, there was a certain oath that they took. Hold them to it. And as soon as you pull their bond, they're out of business. In other words, right now they're operating as a corporation <clears throat> in business to take away your rights. We take away their bond. We take away their lack of oath to the U.S. Constitution. 
and then we give it back to the people, the rights to the people. Now, common law is very easy to do. It's, you know, actually, uh, most people think it's very difficult. Not at all. And if you realize you gather an assembly together, you formulate who you'll have as interim uh, judges, and judges' responsibility simply to keep, keep to the law and keep order in the courtroom. The It was the juries that always did the work, and the judge would finalize what the jury did. In other words, what you want, you've got multiple people deciding what is right, what is wrong, and which, you know, two heads are better than one. It's the same thing with juries. If you have actual common law, you're going to have actual justice, you know, and jury by your peers. So the peers know what's going on. And when they try to have all the secrecy, oh, the jurors can't have any knowledge of you, they don't know, and on and on and on, <clears throat> then they don't know if there's mitigating circumstances, particularly when the evidence is not even allowed in court. How many times has that happened? Not to mention, we caught uh, certain people, I won't even say his name anymore because he's all, already out, thank heavens, deciding what judge should be judge and jury over your entire life uh, in that admiralty courtroom. Well, admiralty has its place, but it's lost the, the um, it's blurred the differences between admiralty, mer maritime, and common law. If you get into the actual structure as the nation originally intended it, admiralty is on the sea maritime is on the shore common law is on the land in there was a reason why it was that in the constitution and there's a reason why it should main, be maintained in that manner because that was the best manner in which to obtain justice but most important is the common law if the leaders feel that they can get by with anything and just keep getting by with more they're going to. But if the people are there saying, okay, that's it, you're going to jail. Next, someone will do the job right, take your, you know, take your place, and let's see whether you do a better job if you don't. Same thing for you. Yeah. If, interesting. Curtis, real quick. Um, yes. Uh, from the standpoint of being a targeted individual, plus you're writing TI tips for the TIs, which is probably uh, oh, only 80 or 90 million of us, right? Yeah. Uh, and TI tips will keep on going. It's like the beginning of something that never stops kind of thing. Yes. Um, from that standpoint, what's your opinion on that? Congressionally, where do we go from that? Well, it, you know, it's um, the, the biggest hurdle that we have is getting the information out to the general public and them actually accepting the information because um, it's hard to understand what the scope is of a targeted individual um, when people hear it they don't really understand what it is they think of um, movies they've seen in the 90s and you know five or ten years ago of, with uh, you know Tom Cruise and you know really what it is is um, our government has our country has changed from a manufacturing society to an information society and they want so much information that uh, and they can get any information that they want that they've uh, decided that uh, they could do a lot with that information and um, I, th I don't know why they're targeting certain individuals it feels like they're ruining our lives but um, you know they can they can through through your bank accounts through your email through your personal relations with coworkers, mm -hmm. family, friends, um, even interaction with day-to-day -day people that you come in contact with on the street can be affected negatively. And it's hard to explain, but you, you all are going to start hearing keywords, and you may not understand it now, but you're going to start hearing them in the next few years. And the public is going to have to understand that these are real things. Voice to skull transmission. 
It's um, through use of satellites, sending a signal to your brain through microwaves that, you're, that they're able to target the very small little part in your brain, which I don't fully understand, to make you hear sounds. And that's happening right now. In mm -hmm. fact, it's on a TV show right now um, on mainstream media, and they were talking about it. And uh, the, I guess the biggest hurdle we have is getting the word out to people. Well, you are, and I appreciate that. Uh, it, what I find is it's a miracle that anyone, especially like in the circumstances you're in, that you figured it out. And that's what's really incredible. Ron Gilman, you know, other people who, have, it, that, that you guys actually figured, so, I mean, the average person doesn't understand anything. It's like you know, they're too busy not figuring it out. You did. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle that you went farther than that, that you actually researched. And then what led to other people who were victims convening as a group, whatever, and, and, they, and against all odds, and then helping educate each other on what they all learn, like Angelica teach me about Pro Omega, Pro Omega, check it out. Or let's say, uh, 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 what's the name of that one company on the east side that's doing cloud competing, computing? Yeah. Um, and of course, they're blocking my mind right now, too. I, uh, yeah, there's a, a point I wanted to make yeah, is that, you know, no, if you think about, you, um, if, and if many you think other that people it's are still even alive, mm -hmm. which tells you you've got some things to do, or you wouldn't be. Yeah. So anyway, but, but now it's cloud, maybe, maybe you've got to call it cloud competing because it clouds our minds, maybe. I don't know. But go ahead, Kurt. Go ahead real yeah, quick. And, uh, you know, a great way to explain it, I just now thought of it. Um, you know, uh, it, it sounds so far-fetched to think that your personal life inside your own, the own walls of your own home can be invaded or your actual thoughts can be read and invaded. It mm -hmm. sounds crazy, doesn't it? Well, think about this. We all know that scientists can use ground-based satellites to hear sound hundreds of light years, thousands, millions of light years away. We also know that there is technology in space right now <coughs> through satellites to look at the nucleus of our solar system, I'm sorry, our galaxy, to see what's in that black hole. If they can do that with technology in space or ground-based to see that far, do you really think that it's too far-fetched that they would use that to see just a few thousand miles below or a few thousand miles away? I would think they'd want to check us out first. The problem is they've gotten too much power, they've gotten too much free reign, and the red tape covering up every single thing that they want to under the guise of top secret is hiding it. Well, yeah, I think in one simple remedy of observation, they're galactic parasites. They, the only thing they don't do is go oink, oink. But then again, <laughs> but that's really what they are. They're pigs. And they're only self-serving, and it's all based on the fact of we're alive, and I've never met an atheist yet that didn't accept the fact that he's alive when I tell him it's a living universe. How could there not be a living God kind of thing? And, it, and we're all connected to it because it keeps us alive, and we keep try, we're keep we supposed to help keep it alive as the Native American people try to wake up these characters. Some came over and agreed with them, and a lot of them came over and figured out how they could kill, rape, and murder. And we're talking about them guys. They seem to be the ones that you're talking about that they have targeted you and me and everybody else, right? Yeah, it sure seems like it. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, Pat, we've got Patricia Shoup. She's the host of Call for Investigation on Curtis. Thank you on that. Thank and you. as we uh, come on, uh, get some more input from, uh, we got Alanda Stallings, Alex, thank you. Uh, James, real quick, while well, before we forget, we get overrun with no time. James, go ahead. Give me an um, input on what you want to bring up on the homeless issues, just so we can get to that before it's too late. Well, they're starting to uh, impound vehicles again, which is not good. Why they want to go back to impounding vehicles, I have no idea, but they either obviously must be broke, desperate for money. Mm -hmm. That's not my website. Uh, you want to get, I think that's something else, Will. Uh, my website was something else, almost in Seattle. I noticed that, that they, I've seen a lot of, I've been driving around Seattle and that they were tagging a lot of cars. Yeah, yeah. What are they going to do with them? Well, they want to they 
have more cars, more vehicles at the auction lots. Right. They're pigs. <laughs> In a fake, there you pointies. go, there's my website. Yeah, they're putting signs up, like, all along Green Lake on one left-hand side. You start at the beginning of Aurora, and you work your way all, all the way down to the Green Lake Center. And if you're driving from Aurora all the way over to the Green Lake Center, there's no parking signs that they've conveniently, within the last 48 hours, you know, they put them up, you know. Um, I park along Green Lake. And usually I move, you know, every so many days with my RV because I'd be worried about it. I might leave it a day, but normally I just move it because, I mean, you could park someplace for up to three days, but you don't know what, you know, you don't know. I, you know, I don't know. You don't know what they're going to do, you know. But it definitely is, you know, you can't park on Capitol Hill. There's cars to cars back to back. They're putting up signs where they definitely the city is having economic issues because everywhere you go now, oh, two hour parking, or there used to be six hour parking, right. and they're not playing any games. But what I've noticed is, is there's areas where you could park, like I park along Green Lake, and the parking enforcer, the last time I saw her was about two weeks ago, was about, you know, so they're coming every like two to three weeks to the area and you know they'll stop by me but there's a truck that's been parked there and they don't say anything so they definitely are on the prowl for money and they definitely are purposely making sure that the homeless population you know courtesy of bill gates and paul allen they disappear from the city because again it goes to you know america 2050.org in the 13 regions and the 13 mega cities that they want to create and you know homeless people are not a part of that and if you're not willing to be a part of that and unfortunately that's what people are being conditioned for they want lab monkeys lab rats and they want people who only work and are worker bees they only want to choose who they want to choose to 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 succeed in life and and that is basically their plan and America is accepting this. They're accepting all of the hype, like I said in prior programs, about the Ebola virus and, and gun control. You know, how many times do you have to keep putting up, what's that gun they keep uh, prop propagandizing? What is it, the AR-15? Every time a hoax shooting comes up, oh, we need to ban the AR-15. Uh, we need to, we need to, oh, oh, they slipped on the sidewalk and it could have been a bullet. We need to ban the AR-15, the AR-15. And they're, and they're, and this is what they're doing. This is why they're, 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 they're fluctuating the numbers with the Ebola because they want you to take the vaccine because they want to make money and they want to stick you with rabies. And there's something in that shot. It takes 10 years to create a vaccine, people. So if you're stupid enough to go get shot up with rabies that, you know, that belongs is indigenous to dogs and cats and other animals then you're stupid enough to be herded into damn cities wake the hell up i'm not going to be nice about it no more this is this is an asap emergency in america i don't know what people think they're doing the thing with the federal reserve that means a new uh, currency is coming the bank of england we're not well the bank of england isn't broke the federal reserve is just printing all kinds of money and we know that when that happens that creates you know, uh, inflation and people, the dollar isn't worth anything. Are, are people even aware that BRICS, which includes countries from South America, South Africa, uh, 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 the UK, done abandoned the dollar and jumped on with Russia and China in this endeavor. And what this endeavor is, is, is it seems to me like all the world pop, pop all the world uh, um, leaders are all involved in this new world order thing. But it seems like China and Russia, because they're emerging, are becoming rogue nations. And this is creating a problem, not just with the technology they're finding in places like Kiev and Kremsia, but it's because they want everybody under the same pillar. And Russia is not willing to do that. So that's what organizations like BRICS are to give an alternative, supposedly, I believe, in banking to the one world order system that's coming. And the Amero is coming to the United States. And you know, you go to countries, they're not no longer, we're no longer being counted in certain nations, our dollar people. You know, that's what happens. It happened with the Rupal in the, what was it, the late 80s in Russia. You know, the people were rich and then they woke up and the, the rupee wasn't even worth 25 cents. This is what we're saying, people. This is all about, as, 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 as Will would say, about creating, you know, a shapeful people, you know, the mind control and that type of thing.
Yeah, Shaples. F yes. <laughs> I have. I have a little bit more. Go ahead, James. Go ahead. Well, let's uh, let's inform our so-called elected leaders. Hey, Barack Obama, Nick Licata, Ed Murray. Uh, this goes on. Tim Burgess. Hey, Tim Burgess. You you got a beautiful home tonight. You know, why don't you people come out and you know take a look at how people are suffering in these in, in these streets out here in Seattle? You know, Tim Burgess, Mr. Tim Burgess. You're you know you're you know you have your beautiful home. You know, Ed Murray. You know, why don't you come out, step outside for a while? You know, find out. You know, and what about what about the gangster lean, the mean lean gangster lean, Greg Nichols? Hey, brother, you know, come out, come out, sleep outside in a in a tent for the night, and right. you know, come join your so-called Nicholsville, why don't you, people? You know, come come out and enjoy life as it seems, instead of living in your phony little mansions, watching your cartoons, polluting your children. Mm. You know, why don't you, you know, be aware that. What is, what is the Gates Foundation actually really doing? You know, they go over to these third world countries with hyperdermic needles. What about us? And, and they yeah. breed more children so they can say, hey, look, people, look, what we're, we're actually trying to help out kids in third world countries. But they're killing yeah. them. What about our children? You're breeding more to, that need something to eat in third world countries to line your Gates pockets with them. billions of dollars. Yeah. People, Bill Gates is the enemy. How hard is it to give people a place if they have a vehicle or if they have a tent? How hard is it to set some land aside? It doesn't have to be a whole lot. I know we've got plenty of it. This town's really hard to make it. You've got to make a lot of money in order to pay for rent. But and that's by food design. is twice as much. It's by design. People have it hard here. They have it hard. No, that's right. They have it hard in San Francisco. They have it hard everywhere. But if they've got even these people have a vehicle and they're trying to take it away from them. It's not so hard to give them a lot to park on. I know the city owns some lots and they're not doing anything with those lots. Um, so they they're tearing them down and making <coughs> mega housing and death traps. You know, understand something here. When you understand, when you go, you got to understand real estate. So I was interested in being in real estate and a lot of the things that a lot of people with this new world order is coming, the the city and the federal government can take your land. It depends on, like in Iowa, okay, you own the land and the house. In Seattle, people are confused. They get it twisted. Oh, I own this land. No, 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 no. You own the house on the land. So anytime you see any of these public action notices going up, it means because the city and the federal government have decided to come and to take over. So what it is is in 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 Washington, you don't have the rights to the land and you can contact the county assessor's office and that is why it's important in the times that you're living in to know the state you're living in. Right. Don't move some damn place and spend a million dollars on a damn house and then Fat Joe Mayor and the city of fat cats on the city council come along and they're like, oh, and by the way, <coughs> you have to move out because the federal government wants to come in here and they want to dig for oil or we want to do this or we want to do what they're doing to Seattle. Are you talking about water and mineral rights? Yeah, water and mineral rights, it's another way they can do it, but the federal government can also just come and just take your land and say, oh, we found nickel on this land mm. or, or copper so we can take your land. And this is what the Obama administration has um, uh, 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 done. Um, uh, They've, they've started to take land that people have paid for in, in uh, the federal forest. Like a long time ago, you used to could get it on cents in the, on the, on the acre in the federal uh, forestry land, and they didn't mind because they wanted people living there. But now they're coming in and they're closing it down. When we had this little, what was it, the shutdown of the government, what was it, in 2008, 2009, and 2011, they decided they shut down the federal lands and they started evicting people off the land. This is what's going on in Seattle. So, so really, when you're talking about Tim Burgess, talking about all these, when, when the economy collapses, and that is what is damn well coming, they're going to be crying for a pot to piss in. And regardless or not, they're paid off or not, they don't even own the land that they're on. 
they've shown the house. So they're one step closer to being homeless. And whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's when China and Russia come in here and take over, because that's what's going on when you go to these schools, you go to these other American institutions, yeah, and no. you're seeing nothing but Asians, nothing but Indians, nothing but Arabs. No, we're, we're all in this money. together, though. We're, but, but, but wait, but you're not understanding. Anytime any country goes through any kind of economic thing or anytime they go through any natural disaster or war, another country will come along and you'll sign a treaty. Well, here, let, well, we want to help you with your economic problem. We want to help you with A, B, and C, provided you let our students come over here. We can harvest your water, harvest your food. China, it's water and soybeans. Lake Michigan, do your, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, do your research. A lot of reason why Lake Mead is being de depleted, it's being purposely done, they're bottling it, they're deliberately depleting it. There's plenty of water underground in California, not so much in other places, but it's water, like you got uh, T-Bone Pickens, he's a, a tycoon in Texas. He owns a whole water aquifer under the side closest to, uh, where is that, uh, New Mexico, all the way up, where is that, uh, Oklahoma or whatever. And he and it's even being depleted. Of course, I think that's the hand of God. And he said, well, it, hell, if they want to uh, get a drink, then they'll pay for it. He don't give a damn. His ass is 80. He's going to be out the door soon. Anyways, but what I'm saying is water wars are coming, not just food wars, water wars, land war. That's why people need to be educated and you need to you need to begin to start to learn to live off grid you need to begin to research your state and your local policies about your home about your land you know things that you may not know you know you know laws are being passed nobody would ever know that bill gates is is in melinda is paying and including the ceo and his wife of the damn microsoft company are paying to lobby to have our guns taken away here in washington alex you know, i was going to mention real quick yes uh, just so they know um, and it's why I'm saying at this point forward, we need to think of something different than the way it's already planned by you guys. But by the way, it should be known that they are part of an aristocracy that goes back thousands of years. But we are just kind of like, oh my God. And now you begin to understand how that all has happened to be what it is now. Uh, but take note, um, if you take the guns away, people, then I don't know if the guys that do it are people, but the idea is that we're Americans, this is the nation of innovation, and that uh, do it. I mean, do you realize that innovation is, is infinite? And I'm giving you guys a warning. <coughs> you're going to have to kill all of us because we're the guys that come up with the ideas. You're not. Except what you, you, use, what you have ideas of is what you can do, steal our ideas. But there will be a point in time here, well, guns are nothing. Take note. You, there's an infinite way to do anything we want to do. It's infinite. And guns are toys. You can come up with stuff that are a lot better than guns. Take the guns away, guys. Just don't take the garage away where we can come up with something better than it. Yeah. Just so you know that. It just it, You <laughs> might want to stay with guns so that it doesn't force really us to come up with something guns better. With yeah. ISIL? Do you really want them to take guns, Will, with ISIL? you really want them to take guns with all the terrorist things that are coming and the people that are attacking us in this nation? Do you really want this, Will? I, We've uh, got uh, Russian uh, planes. We, we don't want to go there, but Alex, real quick, I'm just saying that the I mean, it doesn't take much I love to be you, very, Will. It doesn't take much to be very creative and innovative and come up with something better than a gun. That's I why I love you, A Will. million different ways that things are much better than that. And I, I tell you, they, they, they're going to really get a, a creative beehive going if they don't, don't realize what they're doing. Because, yeah, the guns are, like, unbelievably primitive. We can do stuff that goes way beyond that. But anyway, let's get back to that. Hey, Pat, <laughs> uh, Pat, real quick. Uh, Pat, your input real quick. We're going to get back to you guys. So, yeah. Go ahead, Pat. Well, stay sharp. The main thing and pay attention. I don't care where you start, just start and encourage everyone to do their part because you're alive for a reason and each and every one has something that we need to get done. And encourage not only yourself to get up off the couch and get going and do what you can do because each one has an individual viewpoint that you would be able to do what nobody else can do. Uh, you need to do that because it won't be done if you don't encourage others the same thing if you see <clears throat> what's going on and uh, it's all going to lead back to the same ones doing the same problems just like will was saying you know we there's more of us we have creativity because god gives you creativity if they are you know, luciferian they don't have it 
they have to just steal, just like Will just got done saying. So keep focused. You can come up with so much if you have the discernment of God. You're going to do so many phenomenal things. You'll, you're going to surprise yourself. And if you've got you know, God working with you or you're working and being guided by God, you, you've got it all. It doesn't matter how, what they steal from you. It doesn't matter what they do to you. It, doesn't, it simply doesn't matter. And you've got the power. Take it. Use it. Encourage others to do the same. Yep. yep. Um, I agree. And I'm, I, I want to mention this, that uh, it's not every day that I get a panel of people who have this much information. And Alex, thank you so much. We've got a few more minutes. We're not going to be kicked out of the studio here real quick. But um, the input is really what we're doing is you're simply concerned as a person of the community to get a message across to them. That's why we're doing this. We're not paid to do this. You're not paid to do it. Kurt, you're not. I'm not. And, and your concern is for the other people that they can understand because now you've gone through the sacrifice and so many people are going to be really messed up unless they find out that they're not the only one being messed up. Well, I, I was driving down the road in my neighborhood just the other day and this uh, man turned through the intersection that I was stopped at and he had his windows down and I heard him yell, he was looking at a black car, and I heard him yell, you effing NSA bastards! Mm. And I recognized that type <laughs> of behavior and I just knew he was most probably a TI and the car that he thought was NSA was of course not. And I turned my car around and I tried to flag him down and I said, did you just say, you effing NSA bastards? And he looks at me and goes, yeah, defiantly. And I said, do they mess with you? And his voice started to crack and his tears almost started coming to his eyes. And he said, yeah. And I said, I'm part of Freedom from Electronic Covert Harassment. And we have some information that we can share with you. You're not alone. And he was too afraid to pull over and talk to me. And that was in my neighborhood. They're everywhere and they're in pain. And they prey on people here in Seattle. You know, like I said, since 1977, they've been hitting here with uh, with uh, with a mind control sonar weapon called the woodpecker. And you do that for how many years since 1977? Because these people act off here. I ain't never seen people that they look at you and they don't understand the words coming out your mouth. They need somebody to tell, give them a direction or an instruction, and they can't. You got to talk to them like they're just. They're so aggressive or they're so angry or and it just so many this place has so much mental illness, but I know that there's something going on here. I know that there's some kind of mind control going on here. I know there's something going on here because I've never lived it's not like this in Iowa. It's not it is I ain't even like this in California and I lived in California. It's not even like this in Florida. So what you're saying is true. I mean, I don't think it's the NSA, but I do know that I've been dealing with Google and they're a part of Prism and they're NSA, so Maybe that's, I don't know, they just love messing with people, I guess. I guess that's their thing. But when you turn the camera on them and you expose the light on them like I did Google, they, 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 they get to thinking real quick. I, I think what you're dealing with, Alex, is like looking at a lot of these Middle Eastern countries whose consciousness has been stuck in the third century and still is. And people don't get that. It, it's not anybody's fault. It is what we are. And, and Patricia, as you've mentioned about the them guys that have been stuck the same way but in the west and the east they both are stuck from 2000 years ago into a mode of can't get loose of it and in the sense that the challenge is if you can't change the universe will change you anyway no matter what and we have a chance right now at this little moment and where we're going to be able to reshape that direction if we get it <coughs> if we don't we will get it but anyway pat what's your thoughts just pray. Focus pray. yourself and uh, gather together and pray together. And visualize the answers that we need. And that is that we actually get a justice system back. We take, you know, in the all the information, we stop the technology being used against good people. That we understand who is in charge of what and replace them. Mm. We can do all of these things with the help of God. And if you don't get busy and realize what is going on, you're perpetuating the problem. Do you That's want right. to be part of that? 
Yeah, that's well said. Um, yes, Mary Man? Yeah, I agree. And, um, and Pat, as we mentioned about, as Dr. William B. Mount mentions about on the APFN.org message news board, as we, and also on YouTube, we amount, uh, visualize, visualize that if we don't realize those little secondary thoughts that wander through our minds during the day, those are like prayers even. And if you can just take a little moment here and there or whatever, and stop just thinking about what you need, and um, think about the fact that maybe it's a whole thing bigger than what we are. And, and we put that in our minds to think that way, that maybe we will change it all together because everybody's on a different part of the planetary surface. Maybe it's because we haven't figured out that all of us make a difference with the way we can communicate now with the internet and phones and all that kind of stuff, that we can begin to think and change the matrix, I think. I hope and think. Anyway, go ahead. And Pat, go ahead and interrupt you. Go ahead. No, I, that's fine. Go ahead and let, let the others sum up. And I'm just cheering everyone on. I want everyone to do their best. And it's teamwork that's going to get this done. And my prayers are with each and every one of you. Anyways, we've got about four more minutes. Uh, Alex, one last statement. <laughs> well, um, I would like to tell people to <clears throat> be sure as you're tuning in, you know, you know, Will does this show out of the kindness of his heart, as well as call for an investigation with Patricia Shoup. And if it wasn't for people like this, you know, you know, we wouldn't have, you know, this kind of information. So if, if you love these programs and you love these people and you've been watching them every day for the last 10 or 12 years, donate, support, so yes. they can go out and they can help people. Even if it's just 10 or 20 bucks, support your local community access station because it puts the, the it, 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 it puts a noose on these these baby raping, killing, Jesuit, Luciferian, cabal, slime buckets. That's that's what we're trying to do here. So support them because they're supporting you with information that takes them days, months, weeks, and years to collect to enlighten you. And that is what I've got to say, Will. Will Thank devotes you. his life to this show, and it's quite a sacrifice. But you know what? He gives us and even you a voice. And um, that deserves recognition and support. So absolutely, I agree. Yes. Hey, yeah. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you on that one. And I appreciate that. And if I bring this stuff up in the background here, I think you can, uh, right there, uh, there. Uh, I think it may help you. You can donate to Aldi Live on eBay through the PayPal account. No one in 12 years has given me, well, friends and support and things like that, but no one that watches. Now, if you guys are proving to us that their mind control over our matrix is so powerful that maybe no one watches. I mean, except the bad guys down in their they underground. Watch. Oh, they watch. They watch. They're sending people to you, Will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're sending people. I already told you. Told you. I know Francesca's teaching you. She's one of them. And I know because I've dealt with them personally. Yeah. I know their people. I know the whole collective thing. I whole, know the whole trying to enlighten, trying to observe, trying to disguise, money surfacing, new cars surfacing, and they're supposed to be homeless and they're supposed to fit in, but this is all a part of what's going on. Right. I agree. Thanks. I do too. Um, and then, Pat, uh, we're going to probably have more on Call for Investigation coming up. They can get that on Channel 7723 here in, in cable TV on channels here in Seattle, right, Pat? And so, yes, and then go to right. be sure to go to the archives to check out each of the older programs because, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, each and every one of them <clears throat> have a lot of <clears throat> wow, all of a sudden, <clears throat> a lot of information for you and uh, anything that you can help us with and get information back to us, uh, please. And thank you so much for you know asking for the donations. You're right, Will. I I you know, haven't had a dime. <laughs> it's like I know. you know, it's like if somebody gives me anything, uh, it's a smile. But that helps too. Oh, it does. And I appreciate yeah. it. But uh, yeah. finances would help yeah. immensely. I still need a laptop. Still, you know, just a lot of things. Yeah. James, go ahead. One last statement. Yeah, actually, just a personal uh, note here. Uh, Seth came to pay uh, Mike a visit. Mike Shoup? Nobody yeah. knows who he is. What are you Seth, talking about? Seth Rice, uh, he came to uh, pay his father a visit. 
finally, after all these years. Yeah, very good. Uh, and then PSKS.org, right? PSKS. As it's mentioned here, uh, which you've done for 22 years. You're one of the creators of it, and Elaine Simons and all that. And you've figured it out and all that. Um, it, you've done an amazing job on nothing and living on the streets yourself. People don't get it. You're not in a mansion. But these guys that we meet at these meetings that are paid 150000 a year, and boy, they're good talkers, but they don't do anything else. That's great. Well, they do actually do something. They, take, they impound your vehicles from you. <laughs> they make a warm seat. Oh, dear. Yeah. <coughs> um, a lot of yeah, I agree. The state of Seattle. Um, the mega yeah, city. The bad state of the Seattle. The Rockefeller, UN, Bill Gates, mega city. That's what that is. Yeah, That's well, what the, we're becoming. The, don't forget the Rockefellers tore up the <laughs> electronic rail, which was most advanced in the world at that time. They also made sure that the uh, interurban was taken down, all that. Uh, continually destroying everything that we try to create. Yeah, I, I, I want to mention this. War, I, I, I just want you Rockefellers to realize and all you parasites out there, because I know you watch also. Huh. It's a living universe. And uh, we're only messengers. You can do all the bad stuff you want to us, ruin our lives. I've already it's figured that my life's so badly ruined by you guys that. Sure, I'll just live it out. I'll still be a messenger, though. I'll still bring the message. I won't have the things that I would have liked to have had, like watch my daughter grow up. You know, uh, a family that I could have gotten along with, except a bunch of pigs that were part of you guys. Uh, and then being a victim and a target of you guys and used by you guys uh, for all kinds of just evil stuff. It's amazing I'm here. It's like one of those B-29s that went through one of those firefights and had holes in every, every five inches. They've, you guys have shot me through so much stuff. I figured, well, what else can I do? I mean, I'm, I, I'm kind of getting used to being a target of you. Uh, but in the same sense, what goes around will come around. Wait till it comes back at you. And I'm only a messenger. And the universe is what it is. And if I talk it into creation, my words will go out throughout the cosmos. I'm sure a living universe is listening to me. <laughs> and all the evil you've done, because that's all you guys can be. And after the breeding that you've done, so you, all you do is breed evil. And you're good at it, but after a while, like any kind of disease, you'll kill the host, which you're doing, and almost pretty much done. But then you think, <coughs> we figured that you just keep going to other planets and other galaxies and solar systems doing the same thing you're doing here. I mean, after a while, I can't figure it out, but are you out to destroy the whole universe? I, 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 the question I think the universe has got to find a, a remedy for. But anyway. Well, uh, can I add one more thing real quick? Go ahead. Um, I just want uh, ev all of you listening, if you doubt some of this is that I have said or Will has said, um, visit website surveillanceissues.org. Surveillanceissues.org. And you will see a uh, video on there of a CIA whistleblower speaking of what the NSA and the CIA is doing right now to not only invade your privacy, but to target individuals, innocent individuals, and ruin their lives. Awesome. Thank you, Patricia Shoup. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, you guys, for everything. And if you want to donate, donate to us. It says right there. And we're at the very last second of this program. I appreciate it. Come down here. I'll teach you, any of you how to do TV. If you listen and hear what I just said, that's all I can do. I <coughs> will teach you. It's a reach around the world we still have and may I'm not so have thirsty. much longer. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Thank, thank you, Will. Thank you, Alex. And, uh, Pat Shoup, thank you. And, thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, yeah, and thank you, Pat. I, and will you guys say thank, thank you. you once in a while, too, and send her a dollar or me a penny or something like that? I mean, maybe. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thank you. Out of here. Oh, great show. Uh, it is what it is. It I is always what it is. It's the living universe living and seeing and somehow keeping us here to do that. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, I'll say adieu. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Bye, Pat. And you know what's tough for me is, you know, I'm working during the day, and I would love to work for myself. But it's that jump from working for the man to working for myself that's so incredible and difficult. Mm -hmm. So. Got a sledgehammer. I want to tear all this place apart. Hi. Hello. Hi, Curtis. Hi, Curtis. The equipment's That's bad enough. Don't make it um, worse. Oh, it's Alanda. just as bad as it can get. Yeah. What, what are you Enough that you for? Oh, I was just angry. recording. Um, I feel something once more. Just anyway, a um, couple shows about on, the, basically the New World Order. Did you ever watch oh, yeah. the two shows? Yeah. Okay. We tried to watch the one yeah. time the video wouldn't work.
Uh, yeah, I know the spam yeah. blocking and all this yeah. stuff. But you can go on YouTube. They're on oh, YouTube. well, I've had plenty of that. I, actually, the first show that I recorded about a couple of weeks ago I was talking about my record label and talking about Google and just weird I, do, I can only do what I can only do. If I thought I was crazy, I'd say it's just, it's just weird it's stuff. I've had to just, you just got to watch the show. I mean, I don't know why. I did it with Ron Gilman, that, and I, you know, it felt good to. Hey, Eric, it's real. Yeah, I, um, just call yeah, this phone. I've had a lot of. I'll, I'll, <laughs> Link yeah. you in on the studio. You know, We're about a, to start the next seg thing. Uh, never thought making music and putting together a little label you know, just, anyway, that it would create such a a a, a hemorrhage. If you get the in, here. in the, we're not even. You know, we get out. We've been in distribution okay. five times. We, you know, this will be the URL. fifth time we own our own digital distribution. Yeah, the money comes up missing. But, yeah, you know, and people saying, you know, we had I was uh, positioned on I, MySpace, <laughs> and it, you know, you're they were you're here right there, all this right here, they right were, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you've got email, to be saying privacy. something. Yeah, I will. got I off there, got on email, SoundCloud. Email. Yeah. You yeah. know, then we um, ended yeah. up. We went from Bandcamp, yeah. Songcast Music. Songcast Music was releasing us all over the world. Google yep. was taking and suppressing the information. Anytime anything you do, ends up, it ends up online. And after we opted out of the stores no. and the information nice was showing up, we've had social sites be removed. Yep. They blocked us out of our YouTube account last wow. year. Um, they bought up Tumblr and tried to stop our copyright, blocked us out of the Tumblr page. God. We were illegally removed from Pinterest. No, Facebook, you, you, you see an old Facebook page from seven years ago. Um, a lot of stuff. Uh, and, guys, uh, sit, set, get ready. Uh, Kurt, you sit there. Kurt, uh, uh, James, you sit over there. Get your mics. Yeah, I I do disco, retro, funk, house, electro, rock. Play tw uh, twelve instruments, and definitely I'm up. I don't do hip hop, and they went. You know, my label's Mind Freak Recordings, and they definitely, you know, they you know had me on their you know their radar, and they've been just nonstop. It's just been nonstop harassment. And I'm sick and damn tired of it. And I finally got the chance to get on TV. I wrote it all down and, you know, just the stuff they were doing. And it, it proves to be true. You know, Google's being sued by Nazari Jung, law firm out of San Francisco. And the lawsuit's coming out of San Jose for app issues. We got on and got to back onto our YouTube account in November, right, well, October after we had been locked out since uh, June of last year. And it was because we were connected to the Gmail account. And the moment we disconnected about six weeks later, then we were locked out of the YouTube account again. We tried to send a passcode to reset it. It reset another backup account I had on YouTube. Um, Vivo, they, a couple months ago, are ordering all indie record labels to sign up for Vivo on YouTube. If not, they're going to block them and delete them and shut down their accounts. I did not talk about that. See, it proves what I'm saying about what I've been dealing with with Google. I mean, we, I mean, I had uh, one playlist tell me, oh, you know, this account is connected to YouTube and no. SoundCloud and blah, blah, now, blah. What mic are you going to use? And they're releasing my music and just illegally and just weird stuff. Uh, like, is there another cable there? We got there? everything copyrighted. Yeah, it, but it is was there another cable over there? You gotta help me. I can't do everything. All my music. You've been they tried to cop uh, ten years. Uh, uh, they tried to. Uh, is there a uh, cable? Hold up and my copyright. Please hold up. Uh, certificate last year, for nine months last year for nine months, and I finally busted out the guy at the copyright office about being involved. They ganked another track, and I noticed a number of my tracks on SoundCloud. SoundCloud gave Google a an actual. Uh, 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 track is supposed to be on our new album frequency and because of that I won't even release it it'll be it'll go right into copyright and then it'll be released into our digital stores we have a digital store over across seas digital store here and we're just starting up they've propositioned you know artists one artist was already to sign then this girl they sent her and the girl was mimicking me you know, making fun of my, my Jewish faith and just, and I told uh, Jackie about her and I confronted the girlfriend, she was one of them. She avoided me, didn't want to talk to me, you know, just really weird stuff, you know. And then, you know, they had an agent sitting down here in Kirkland and she was following me around, confronted her. 
I disappeared, moved up to Monroe briefly, and then she surfaced up there after I confronted her. But you're supposed to be homeless living in a parking lot, and you got a $4,000 car and a dog. You know, with no money. I called the police. She tried to break into the house where I was at. Yeah, uh, this anyway, is the kind of stuff I've out. been dealing with because... Breaking news. <laughs> you What's wouldn't... Hold on. They were sending agents in we're the gym. Hold on. I reported it to the gym. Masonic symbols. Just all kinds of stuff. You know, they did some pretty... Some pretty scandalous stuff. But we got IRSC codes, UPC the, uh, codes. You know... I don't know if it's so much really the NSA as it is. You have to understand Google's a part of PRISM, and so they are a part of the NSA. So basically they can, you know, I don't believe the NSA has any reason to shut me down, but MySpace does because I befriended Russell Smalls, and Russell Smalls turned him on to me, and they try to proposition me on MySpace. And Kurt, how, how many years have you been targeted? That, uh, how many years have you been targeted? Um, three years. Three years. Okay. Um, we're going to start here in just a That's second. That's why I don't understand. I know because I'm a black woman and I'm running the label and they stereotype. And I already know, like, who's behind the scenes and who's messing around, you know. But considerably speaking, when you understand the history of music, electronic music is a white, well, it was black, but it predominantly is run by white people. You don't have a black woman doing what I'm doing. You know, you don't play 12 instruments. You can't, you don't, you know, I do country music. I write symphony music. You know, I, I'm i very gifted. So anytime they see anything, because you do understand about, like Clive Davis, he, Whitney Houston was a sacrifice, okay? I won't get into it about everything, but one of these times I will. And she was a sacrifice. He was also connected to Otis Redding. You know, they assign people. They tried to put agents up under me. Look, I started confronting these people. When I finally this year just got tired of it, and I was tired of it last year, when I finally started confronting them, like I told you I confronted them, then, they, then it's a different ball game. See, because I have hindsight, because God gives me hindsight, I know when they're there, and they'll go out of their way to try to avoid you but be in contact and put it in your face that they're in contact with the, with someone you know and we had another artist and that artist is not signing we haven't heard anything from him and he was all set to sign and then you know he just disappeared and he was one of my good friends wow. and again because they have the ability to remotely view your phone and this isn't crazy edward snowden said this i thought it was crazy but when they're showing up at places and i'm not talking about it in my Twitter page, and you're showing up where I'm at, and you're trying to put this in my face, you know, I really got a question, you know. And, you know, what keeps me knowing I ain't crazy is I've heard the testimonies of other people that have had to come out, like Arizona Wilder and Catherine O'Neill, you know, and John Todd. Because what they did to him, they followed him and followed him and followed him. And that's what they do to me. And I don't think it has anything to do with, it's just particularly like two rogue labels, one in Brazil and one in Mexico. They block us out of our YouTube account. And then all of a sudden there's this Mind Freak Records on, on, on YouTube.